considered the best and highest tech first stage rocket engine of the last millennium. The Russian RD-180 rocket engine was once hailed as the future of American aerospace. Even Elon Musk, SpaceX CEO notorious for Starship's Monster Raptor rocket engine, also recognized the RD-180 was great. The pride about the legendary RD-180 drives Roscosmos chief Yuri Borisov to confidently declare that once giant Russia awakens, it can be able to beat any newcomer, even the best rocket engine ever now, SpaceX's Raptor. However, Russia's vague strategy for that goal demonstrates that all are just a placebo for the loser in the 21st century space race. Because Russia finally realized SpaceX's Raptor is better than Russia's best engines, find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. 20th century aerospace pioneer lives only in the memories of nostalgic people. Now, the war in Ukraine has been exceptionally challenging for Russia's aerospace community. The sector is struggling under international sanctions. Highly trained specialists are being encouraged to serve as infantry in the Roscosmos Space Agency's own militia. Perhaps the Kremlin only recently realized the bitter situation because, back in 2022, they even kept the misleading that the decision to stop supplying rocket engines to the U.S. could interrupt the aerospace operation of this nation. The trump card that they aim for is the RD-180. The RD-180 liquid propellant rocket engine developed and manufactured by Russia's Energomash Research and Production Association is intended for use in the U.S. Atlas family of launch vehicles. Overall, Energomash has delivered 122 RD-180 rocket engines to the United States over more than 20 years of cooperation. Obviously, Roscosmos's mindset by then is not wrong. Even SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk also admitted that the Russian-made RD-180 engine was a great engine. In the interview with Matthias D. Fnair, the CEO of Insider's parent company, Axel Springer, which took place at Tesla's factory in Fremont, California in 2022, Musk said, Boeing and Lockheed have strongly relied on the Russian RD-180 engine which I should say, to be fair, is a great engine. They are hoping to move away from that in the future with engines from Blue Origin. Dmitry Rogozin, the head of the Russian space agency, arrogantly declared previously, in a situation like this, we can't supply the United States with our world's best rocket engines. Let them fly on something else. They're broomsticks. I don't know what. To respond, Musk simultaneously indicated that SpaceX would not face any risk or opportunity from halted sales of Russian engines because, at SpaceX, we design and manufacture our own rocket engines, so we did not really own any Russian components at all. He added, and then what? SpaceX has produced and developed the best rocket engine ever built, the Raptor engine, and more importantly, it is able to scrub the Russian's pride, RD. 180 to the side. There is so much evidence that the Raptor is superior to the RD-180 in every aspect. Possibly the greatest technical advantage these new engines have over the RD-180 is that they use methane as fuel rather than kerosene, as the RD-180 does. The Russian design uses an oxygen-rich stage combustion cycle and has a very high chamber pressure. These give it very good specific impulse for a kerosene-fueled engine. But Kerosene can gunk up the works of an engine after repeated use. Methane has a higher specific impulse and burns cleaner. It is also much easier in principle to synthesize on Mars, which Musk aims to do. Raptor engine is one of the first to be powered by methane and designed to be reused 1,000 times. While RD-180 as well as the majority of Russian technology just serves for a one-way trip, SpaceX has climbed to a new level, considering that reusability is a key aspect. Musk has said each engine needs to be capable of flying up to 1,000 times to support the ambitious operations of Starship. That's a major challenge. The most reused engines in space exploration history were the main engines on each space shuttle, which flew up to only a few dozen times each. It's quite ambitious, but Elon Musk and its companions have been getting closer to that goal. To make it possible, the engine itself needs to be reliable and efficient in the first place. The Raptor resembles the RD-180 in that it feeds the pre-burner exhaust into the combustion chamber, ensuring that almost all the fuel and oxidizer stored in the rocket's tanks are used to generate thrust. However, the Raptor relies on a key tweak both fuel-rich and oxidizer-rich flows power its turbopumps, theoretically resulting in maximum efficiency. And the result is very sweet. When, in February 2019, a successful test of SpaceX's Raptor engine showed the high pressures reached in the Raptor's thrust chamber up to 269 bar at the third version. 
Clearly, Raptor had exceeded the record held for several decades by the awesome Russian RD-180. Fast forward to early this year, the Starship team has created the Raptor in its fourth generation with impressive tons of force, 303, and their long-term goal is over 330. If SpaceX intentionally limits its power at 303 tons of force in the real flight, a group of 33 Raptors still generates the horror power with a thrust of 10,000 tons of force. If someone says it's unfair to compare an experimental engine version and a type of engine that is already in operation. Okay, let's talk about Raptor 2. This second generation becomes more and more reliable with each Starship test flight. The Raptor 2 currently is at 2200 kilonewtons, the RD-180 is at 4150 kilonewtons, and the F-1 is still the king out of these at 7740 kilonewtons. Thrust is great, but what's maybe just as important when designing a rocket is the thrust-to-weight ratio or how heavy the engine is compared to how much thrust it produces. A higher thrust-to-weight engine ultimately means less dead weight the rocket needs to lug around. The RDU-180 is 78-1. The Raptor, however, takes the lead and is better here with an astonishing 200, one thrust-to-weight ratio. Unbelievable! Another that makes the modern Raptor engine stay apart from other traditional engines like the ERD-180 is the high commercialization. RD-180 costs 9 to $10 million each, 9 to 10 times the cost of Raptor in 2019. And once SpaceX mass produces engines for $250,000 each, this gap will be even much larger. I think the reusability and the application of the principle the best part is no part are the keys to this. The RDU-180 is not reusable, or at least never reused, which is different from Raptor's which will all be reused up to thousand times. Furthermore, can't help but say the best part is no part. As usual, the more components you eliminate, the more money you can save. At a glance, we can see clearly that the Raptor is much more aesthetic than the design of RD-180. The Raptor looks very compact. Along with Raptor's evolution, more and more parts are eliminated from it, helping the engine to lose weight significantly. Raptor 1 weighs 2,100 kilograms. This number gets lower extremely at Raptor 2 and Raptor 3 with 1,700 kilograms and 1,300 kilograms respectively. As Elon revealed, the Raptor 4 will certainly be much lighter than the Raptor 3 once the heavy heat shield is ditched. Removing the need for a heat shield will also increase the thrust-to-weight ratio. The Russian engines, on the other hand, inspire less confidence. Insulating foam spills like whipped cream from joints, weld lines, scar brawny pipes, and some parts seem to be held together by baling wire. It is truly a big elephant with 5,400 kilograms without its associated thrust frame and other mounting hardware. It makes sense because the ERD-180 is a twin-chambered engine, while like all Western engines, Raptor has only a single chamber. Its single chamber gives it a similar thrust class to the individual chambers of RD-180. Practically two Raptors could easily fit into the space of one RD-180, giving about the same total thrust. There is a humorous story that in 2001, when the workhorse RD-180 was praised as the future of U.S. rocketry, Someone said, the Russians don't worry about cosmetics or workmanship. They build the thing and test the shit out of it. This engine costs $10 million and produces almost 1 million pounds of thrust. You can't do that with an American-made engine. However, everything has changed right now. SpaceX's Raptor engine has been revolutionizing the way both Russians and Americans thought about a rocket engine, given that it's totally possible to combine various factors like aesthetic, low-cost, powerful thrust, and reusability into one design. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.